Welcome back you guys. Today I'm going to teach you how to do some small inconspicuous touch-ups on a wall without having to repaint the whole wall. However, I should put a disclaimer here. If you want to be able to 100% never see them, you're going to have to just do the old school like fill it, sand it flat, spot prime it, repaint the whole wall. That's the only way you can ever get it to be 100%. But anyways, we have just a couple of real small little uh, dings in the wall here. I actually filmed another video, but it didn't work out. I just like, I actually forgot to turn the camera on. So I, I thought I had it on and I have all this footage of me setting up the camera and then cuts as soon as I actually start filling it. But I have a couple of small little dings here that were from having one of these uh, weight things hanging here. And one of my kids like pulled the elastic and boom, let it go. It hit the wall. Couple little dents. They're very tiny, but I think we can inconspicuously fill and paint these. So let's get started. All right, you guys, puttying 101. If you wanna do really small holes, use a really small knife. I think this thing is maybe an inch or smaller. I actually cut, I think a quarter inch off this knife with some tin snips a while back just to make it even smaller. We got some dry decks here, you know, the pink stuff. So regular drywall mud will work just fine too. Wouldn't recommend quick set. And these are small holes, so don't take much mud. A couple of quick notes before I actually fill this. So the key here is to not actually touch the wall with your putty knife. As soon as you actually scrape your putty knife across the wall, you change the sheen of all the paint around the little thing you fix. So I'm going to be using as little of this stuff as absolutely necessary to fill these teeny tiny little holes because the smaller we keep the repair, the harder it is to find after. So it's a very small dent, so we only need a very small amount of mud on our knife. I'm so used to drywall, I call this stuff mud. About like that. That should be good. Got another one right above it. So you can see I'm not actually touching the wall with my knife. These are gonna take roughly half an hour to an hour to dry. I'm gonna go find something else to do for a little bit. We'll get back to it in a minute, or 60. So after filling those two ones up there, I found an even better one down here that was a little bit deeper. So next up, we gotta sand it. And I like to use just a folded over piece of sandpaper and I try to use just the edge. So I kind of round it over like this and I only try and sand that much because the same way I tried not to touch the wall with the putty knife and spread that repair out further, the exact same way I'm gonna be trying not to sand anything but the filler here. So it's definitely, oh, is this even actually dry? I hope so. It's definitely a bit time consuming sanding like this and having to be so careful. It's a lot less time consuming than painting the whole wall. Even the dust, I try not to get too much of it on the wall because that is really visible. This one's only half dry. Always handy to have one of those around. All right, back to it. So you also want to make sure that you don't over sand your filler, like take all the excess out of the actual fill which can be easy to do, especially when your sandpaper is curled over like this. So I'm focusing on the edges right now. So far, this little repair hasn't gone more than three quarters of a square inch. About 20 square mils for the metric folk. We are getting close, just about flat enough. And I've managed to not touch the rest of the wall around it, only about a couple of mils past the actual putty. I think we can go with that. That's good, right there.
I actually decided to put some tape next to it because these ones are so small they're almost hard to find after. These ones are, I'd say, less than a square half inch. I mean, if I put some pressure on these, I could sand them in like a couple seconds, but I will have scratch marks all over the wall, way outside of my touch up. I'd say that one's pretty much good enough. I'm also not touching much of the wall because I don't want to get finger grease all over it that I'll see. I mean, those are getting so hard to see. You can only see it when you go like this. So to do the rest of this repair, we're going to use a mini roller. In my other video, I used a paintbrush and you know, you can get mediocre results with a paintbrush, but it can be really hard to not leave a lip and to not let the repair get too spread out. So I think I'm just going to be using the very end of the mini roller to dab it. I honestly haven't tried this yet, but I just have this feeling that that might actually give us the best results. So I've dabbed a little bit in there. And then to just sort of stop it from being so thick, like it is right there, I'm just going to kind of dab this around. It'll also get off any fibers, like this one instantly had a fiber there. So I'm kind of saturating the end of this. And it's leaving a bit of the texture that we want to see. So I think we're pretty close. I don't even want to use it so flat. So I'm now going to try and get the edges of this roller a bit better so that I can just like leave little dabs like that. So we're close. We're close. I think I could try this on some of them and it would be okay. Maybe we'll do the lower one first. Okay, let's see how this works. Yeah, it's actually pretty easy to not overdo it. I want to go a little bit bigger than the repair. I mean, this one's down so low, it won't really matter, but that did a good job at leaving some texture. Wow, that might be the way to do it. Although I think I'm going to take this one a bit wider and just try and feather that edge just a little bit with the drier, the drier parts. That looks better. So I haven't even dunked this back in because it felt like there was enough paint and these ones are so small that I just don't want to go much any more than I have to. I'm really interested to see how this is going to look when it's dry. I know you'll see some of the edges a little bit and I also know there will be a sheen difference. But like, if this wasn't at eye level, I think we, we have a winner. Like on a ceiling where you can't see the sheen too much. Yeah, let's dry those and see how it looks. Okay, you guys, let's try and get a load of these repairs. I mean, there's that one. I'm about four inches away. If we go back a little further, it starts to disappear into the wall a bit. That's the one I'd say I'm the least happy with. It almost needs to be sanded and then dabbed again, and then it would look closer to perfect. But hey, it's just a quick touch up with one little coat of paint. So pretty happy with that. So the second one down below is really hard to pick up, but it is right there, right in the center. Again, could use a quick sand and some more dabbing, but overall, that one really blends in. The paint texture is pretty good. Now, what we haven't looked at is like, can we find them if we turn and look down this side of the wall? So there's way too much glare from the sun back there, but they're really hard to see. I can't really pick up on camera the sheen difference, but by eye, I can see it a little bit. 
Now that bigger one I did down closer to the floor, that one turned out great. The only problem is I think the wall is a little bit grubby down low because I lean up these mats against the wall. So I think it's made the wall dirty over time so the new paint is very bright by comparison. But overall, that repair turned out really good too, especially for only being eight inches off the floor. Never see it. Let's see if we can see the sheen difference on this one. Again, it's really hard to pick up. I pretty much can't pick it up on camera, maybe a little, but overall to go from a dent in the wall to that, that's pretty good, especially with how little effort it was. And if I poke my head around this wall in general, I mean, there's stuff anyways. Like, it's not perfect, but when I'm six feet away, I can't see most of it. It's fine. And now we have three less dings in this wall. Anyways, you guys, I'm actually pretty happy with the results. And um, before you guys go like, Ben, are you still working on the walls in your garage? No, I'm not. I could have lived with all three of those. But like I mentioned, I actually filmed this video before already and I did it with the brush. The brush did not work as well and I mentioned that I missed that whole shot. So I missed the shot of actually filling the imperfection. So I just thought, well, why don't we try and do it again? And in the other video, I was gonna be just saying to try using one of these instead of actually showing it. So I'm glad I was able to try it. That's actually my first time using this to dab with. Um, I know dab totally sounds like a drug, drug term. I, I don't know what it means exactly, but I'm pretty sure it is. Anyways, uh, we're not getting into that. I'm happy with how these little patches turned out. Again though, big disclaimer, if you think that you can just go around your house touching up a whole bunch of little things like that, like don't bother. Um, you're gonna need to paint the whole wall if you have a whole bunch of them. Like a few little spots like that, you'll get away with. But if you're doing patches everywhere, it's gonna end up looking probably like this ceiling in this clip. So as you can see, there's some pretty severe sheen differences that cause you to be able to see every little spot that's been touched up. I definitely don't recommend that. Uh, as much of a pain as it is to repaint ceilings when you have a lot of touch-ups to do, you just need to expect that you're going to have to do one last final coat when you've finished filling all the imperfections and sanding them down to exactly where you want them. Actually, it's not just one coat, it's spot priming and one final coat. So in this case, I was using the same wall paint as, um, well, what the wall is, because I still have it on hand. So I was able to get pretty good results, but also if you think you're going to be able to color match paint and touch up areas, you won't. You're gonna have to paint corner to corner your whole wall. That's just the way it is. I'm pretty sure it's a conspiracy to sell more paint. Um, no, it's not. It's probably just something they haven't figured out because the first person that can figure out how to make a paint that like, doesn't flash and is able to be touched up even a day or two or even weeks later, um, yeah, they'll make millions. So it's either a conspiracy or they haven't figured it out. Maybe they need to make like smart paint with microchips in the paint. <laughs> I'm not going there. Anyways, you guys, I hope you're doing well and I hope this helps you figure out how to touch up those small little areas that are bothering you once you've finished your project and you just have a few things that you wanna fix, but you don't wanna repaint the whole place, these methods are ideal for that situation. Anyways, thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I hope your project's going really well, but I hope you're doing even better. And even though that's starting to become a tagline, I, I still really mean it. I'm not trying to be cheesy. I, I mean that every time. I hope you're doing awesome. Thanks for watching. Till the next one.